Okay, I'm going to call to order the uh, April 8th meeting of the school directors. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, and it is all liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Dr. Bowman, could you leave the door open? Oh, absolutely. Thank you. We'll start the uh, the meeting with the roll call, Ms. Duncan. Mr. Buckley? Yes. Mr. Meckley? Here. Mrs. Souder? Yes. Ms. Krug? Here. Mr. Flickinger? Here. Mrs. Swope? Here. Mrs. Miller? Here. Mr. Getz? Here. Mr. Kenshu? Here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I do want to announce that we did have an executive session to discuss personnel issues before this meeting, and then also for the members of the public. Uh, there will be two opportunities for the public to provide comments to the board. Uh, the first opportunity will be for speakers registered in advance of the meeting to speak on agenda-related items. The second opportunity occurs at the end of the meeting for speakers to comment on non-agenda district-related items. All public comments will be limited to three minutes in length. We will have a timer uh, for you to keep track of your time. Please state your name and municipality for the record uh, and direct all comments to the president and the vice president when addressing the board. Please note that the board will be listening, but please do not expect an immediate response. If further action is needed, the superintendent will follow up with you. Thank you. All right, then we will move to the next agenda item, which is approval of minutes. We do have uh, several minutes. There's the Committee of the Whole for Finance and Personal Meetings from um, uh, March 4th. There's the study session meeting minutes from March 4th, board meeting minutes from March 11th, and the athletic subcommittee meeting minutes from March 18th. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So motion. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Okay, we'll take a quick voice vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Thank you. We'll move on to our building reports. Uh, Ms. Mo Mr. Mullen, start off with you. Good evening, board, community, and colleagues. Uh, Matt Muller, Director of Safety Communications. It's my pleasure to say a few words and privilege on behalf of what we're doing in the world of safety and communications. I'll start off with communications. You saw the April newsletter coming up today, I think, uh, to you as well. Uh, right now, we're over 2,000 clicks on that. That came out around the next time today. So we're pretty excited about that. We're excited, again, to continue to tell the story of all the folks, uh, all the good things we're doing at district students and staff. Uh, you've seen promos on paraprofessionals, uh, assistant principals, the whole way down to many different folks with library specialists, media specialists. Uh, there'll be more of those coming on as we have them as they occur. Uh, again, we also have April, a couple key things in April. April is the month of military child. So we're going to be wearing uh, purple on April 17th. We're also going to see us celebrate Child Abuse Prevention Month is also in April. Those we're wearing blue April 26th. There's some resources that came out also in that newsletter today to, to highlight how we can uh, assist with child abuse. Uh, um, my monthly update on Officer Smith continues to be an asset to us. Again, this month, you can see that 33% uh, of his time spent in high school, 34% in middle school. And um, we have 14% K to 6 with that's 81% total, but the other piece of that would be administrative things, district office related things, meetings, lunch duties, and those kind of things as well. So again, uh, we're pretty excited about what Dwayne is bringing to the team. And on March 18th in here, we had our monthly safety task force. 
20 individuals in here, uh, a number of first responders were here also, and we also had Warren Blady, the director of EMS services out of Gettysburg, the 911 Center, came in and talked to us about you know, mass tragedies and different disasters and what they can do for us and the you know, chain of command and those kind of things, kind of helping us lead us through what we're trying to do with our emergency operations plan. plan and so uh, my goal is to bring and infuse a guest speaker into every meeting. Mr. Bladen was the last one we had. Next month, this month, actually, we have uh, Bill Shoot, Columbia Gas, coming in to talk about that. Uh, again, we have a massive complex and those sorts of things. And then in May, we finish up with Jason Haynes, Lieutenant Commander of the PSP of Gettysburg, and what the state police can do to, you know, for us as a district. So that's what I have for safety and communication. Great day to be Thank you. Dr. Corbin. Hi, Betty Gould. I'm Steph Corbin. Director of Special Ed and Student Services. Um, our students have been gearing up to get ready for the PSSA testing. So that's a lot of what we've been doing. And our life skills students were taking their PASS exams um, that go through May. So I just wanted to give a couple shout outs and some kudos to some of our folks. Um, Derek Starr, who's actually sitting back there, did a wonderful presentation on co-teaching um, and he did a fabulous job. So there were a lot of other People that also presented, but I just wanted to kind of highlight and showcase them. And we had some other special education teachers that also presented that day for our March PD. Um, also, kudos to our school counselors. This is the time of the year where they're starting to do all of the transitions. So all of the kids, you know, maybe from fourth to fifth, fifth to sixth, but also those really important grades, your sixth to seventh graders, your eighth to ninth graders, your third to fourth graders. So we are holding lots of transition meetings with the principal, the administrators, the school counselors, school site. <laughs> just really trying to make those transitions for our students um, something that they're excited about and ready for for the 24 25 school year. So thank you. Hello, Lori Hersnick, also just wrapping up the special ed and student services report with our English language learners who were focused on um, the Women's History Month and doing research. And also Mandy Howell, who one of our teachers who presented during our in-service day on strategies to support our, our English language learners and vocabulary. So she had um, really great evaluations and everybody liked her session. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening, everybody. I'm Charlie Chavato. I'm the director of curriculum for the school district. Um, I'm going to actually start with one of my last report um, items, which is to highlight one of our science curriculum leaders, um, Kara Holweiler. I know I've spoken to her many times or spoken about her many times to the board, but on March 14th, she was actually um, the direct facilitator of one of the uh, Fraysol Science PLCs, our professional learning community. Uh, which meets monthly um, at the LIU. Um, she came in virtually and connected with people across the Tri-County area. Um, she is definitely putting science on the map, both uh, here at CVSD and across the state. So it was really cool to see her present on what classrooms are gonna look like in the future as we uh, get ready to align our curriculum to the single standard. So just wanna give her a major shout out. She did a phenomenal job. I was able to be in attendance. We had a couple other folks from uh, the district there as well. So it was great to see her shine and just wanna give her the acknowledgement that she deserves. Um, Dr. Bone and I are continuing to lead the effort for the TSI school improvement plan at the high school. Uh, I'm excited to share that our steering committee that met um, back in March, shortly after our school board meeting in March, came to consensus around all the 18 essential practices. Um, we have school level essential practices, similar to what uh, Dr. Sterner had with the conference plan. Um, with essential practices, but Dr. Bowman and I just reviewed all the data and we're getting ready uh, in the next two weeks to actually talk through some of the root cause pieces uh, so we can get to the action plan and start to put that into place starting next school year. So more information and updates coming for that. Um, from the federal program side of the house, um, can't believe I'm wrapping up my first year, but wrapping up the first year and throw federal programs out on top of it. So I'm um, excited to have learned through that process. Um, we've historically remained a low risk school, which is fantastic. That's kudos to a lot of the historical work that's been done in federal programs. Um, so just wanted to share that as of April 1st, that entire audit um, and monitoring was completed. So I'm just waiting for the final report back from the Department of Federal Programs which myself, Mrs. Duncan, um, and Ms. Ashley Art will be sitting in on, on April 18th. So I'm happy to 
give an update on that uh, moving forward. But if we continue to stay low risk, we are only on that um, cyclical monitoring cycle for three years. So we wouldn't get audited for another three years for federal programs. And I'm sure you all saw that today was monumental for our continental United States. We had 15 uh, states that were within the totality path of the eclipse. Uh, where are my science socks to uh, really celebrate it? So very excited that all of our building administrators and district office administrators and all of our science leaders um, across the district were able to help support a K-12 uh, effort to get our kids out and seeing everything safely. And uh, we got the babies in, we got them out, and uh, they got to see some pretty cool stuff, which is really a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So it was about a 90% coverage today. So it was really cool to see the kindergartners all the way up to the seniors enjoying it. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Clients. Good evening, Board of Directors. Mr. Cobb, speaking on behalf of CT and NME, yes, shout out to the Total Eclipse. That was awesome for our kids to experience that science, that natural science experiment in front of us. It was awesome. Um, I just wanted to make some announcements here that we both, uh, both schools had in common. Uh, both elementary schools hosted Grandparents' Day uh, opportunities for our community. The events were well received and highly attended by both schools. We just had our Grandparents' Day today at NOE, uh, probably, but it all worked out well. Um, but I did want to give uh, kudos to one of our teachers. Uh, shout out to uh, Mrs. Brittany Moyer. She's one of our special education teachers. And one of the things that we dealt with Grandparents' Day, some kids did not have grandparents or grandparents who couldn't attend. She came up with the idea of, well, we all have grand friends out there, and it's our responsibility is to just take care of our kids. So I thought that was wonderful. That permeated throughout the school, just caring for one another, caring for our elderly. So that was a great message um, that went through our school. Um, and both schools attended the stage of the page performances on two separate days in Newark. The students enjoyed the performance of the Boy Who Moved Flowers at the Pell Center. Uh, this field trip is grant funded each year, so it's uh, it's funded by an anonymous donor. So we thank them, and we appreciate that special opportunity for our kids to experience that. And last but not least, uh, just some save the dates for our concerts that will be coming up at high school uh, this spring. The NOE concert, K through one concerts, May 9th. The CT concert, K one, is May sixth. The CT second through third grade concert is May eighth, and the NOE second through Third grade concert is May 14th. We hope that you can attend us. Thank you. Yeah. Good evening. This is McLaughlin reporting out for CBIS. Uh, we have a few exciting things to tell you about. One is March was music in our schools month, and we had a lot of fun things happening. Um, our student mu musicians performed with their K 12 counterparts recently at the orchestra and choral events that were held in high school on March 24th and 26th. Our Marine Orchestra performed with the Middle School and High School Orchestra. And our CBS, CBIS singers in sixth grade chorus performed with the middle and high school chorus on March 26th. So it's packed houses, a great time for everybody. And they, uh, a hard, a lot of hard work paid off. You could really see the improvement from the beginning of the year until the spring. And it was exciting for families to see that too. The next thing that went on recently was we have been involved in a mini fun effort um, for the kids and the CBIS students under the leadership of our teachers, Aaron Jacoby and Tommy Fett, again, work together um, really combined all the heart for those in need and unbelievable with 16,000 ish something on Friday night that was raised by Sunday, it was $19,025 and 95 cents that was raised from four diamonds. Fund. Um, so it was really an overwhelming um, supportive effort by all of the school. There was an after school celebration this past Friday, students enjoyed games, dancing, hanging out with friends. Um, they lit up the night with all the, the, um, the light sticks and everything. It was just really momentous and touching and the kids had a great time. And then last but not least, tomorrow night, I know you have a session at six, but from five to 7 p.m., we have the first annual spring community night at CBIS. It is a drop-in, drop-out style. So if you can come between five and 5.30ish or whatever, feel free to please come or any um, community members who can make it as well. Of the activities happening, um, the highlight is our new sensory path dedication. This path was funded by an awarded grant from the Gettysburg Arts Council to Ms. Jess Vasello, our art teacher, and her along with a lot of supporting students and staff work together to bring her design to life. There's a long path along the playground accessible to our community as well as our uh, students at recess and they are loving it already, all the different things they can do with the painted um, designs on the path. That dedication will happen between like 5.30 and 5.40, so I'm um, pressed with in attendance. 
There will also be some displays of students' connects creations and Lego creations. Our music groups and streams will be performing. The book fair will be open and much more. So please join us if you're able. Thank you. Dr. Chase. Good evening, members, board, community, colleagues. I'm Josh Shea, our proud principal of Oxford Middle School. On March 22nd, our student council put on the annual Spring Fling semi formal dance. We have about 600 students in the middle school. We sold over 300 tickets. We had a huge number turnout. And really, other than some sore feet, the night went on without a hitch. Um, I do want to publicly thank Ms. Sengelhart, who is the student council advisor, our student council, and then the teachers and parents who gave up a Friday evening to make sure the students were safe and happy and had a lot of fun. On Friday, April 5th, so just this past Friday, we hosted the Adams and Cumberland County Music Educators Association adjudication for middle school orchestra. This is the first time in five years that we participated in this, and we actually ended up hosting. There were seven orchestras that came, and the adjudicators raved about how far our students had come in the time that they had last been here. So I know it's been five years, but it's been a bit of a tumultuous five years for music education, you know, when you think about what that looked like through COVID and those partial days, and to see what Ms. Creel has done with our students and has grown the orchestra is really outstanding. So congratulations to all of our musicians. And finally, congratulations to uh, one of our seventh graders, Ramaya Kennedy. If you get the Gettysburg Times, you may have seen all sorts of artwork about the ad contest that they had. Well, on page 15, you will see a full page ad draw, hand drawn by Ramaya for Adams Electric. She actually won second place overall and she received the full publication and an award from the Times. So congratulations, Maya. Thank you very much, everyone. And as always, it's been a great month. Good luck. Mr. Worley. Good evening, Doug Worley, Athletic Director. Um, I would be remiss if I did not uh, celebrate from the winter season the fact that our boys' swim team recently uh, was awarded the YAIA Sportsmanship Award as voted on by league coaches. Uh, so we're always proud of the sportsmanship displayed by our student athletes, uh, and it's always nice to be recognized by that as well. So congratulations to Coach Weiler and the boys' swim team. Uh, likewise, congratulations to Sydney Wimpigler of our girls' lacrosse team. Uh, last week, she recorded her 100th career goal. Uh, she is on a very short list of those who have achieved this record in the girls' lacrosse 16-year history. Uh, so it is quite an accomplishment. Um, as you can see, it's been a very busy day. We're thankful that the rain held out um, and we're excited that the spring sports had the opportunity to play and get out today. Uh, so campus was buzzing with many events. Um, and so uh, the last thing that I want to just uh, make you aware of is that we will be having our second and final college signing day for our seniors on April 24th. Uh, we look forward to celebrating our senior student athletes who have now decided to move on in both their academic and athletic careers. I know so far we have approximately six more on top of the 12 we already had. So uh, this has been a great senior class that uh, is looking to move forward as they uh, leave New Oxford next year and continue their careers. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Little. Good evening, Drew Little with the Federal Career and Technology Center. Uh, we'll start off with some acknowledgements. Uh, our construction class has made some visits here the last month, and they have one coming up to Green Roofing, Conalonga Enterprises, and then we will be visiting with Kinsley uh, Construction here on April 19th. Uh, our welding students have also been out and about. Uh, Precision Components and ESOP have been gracious to host our students. And again, that's that work-based learning environment. That's like those career days where we have small groups of students that go out. Uh, they work and kind of go through the daily atmosphere and and learn a little bit more about those career opportunities that are in that workforce. Um, some things on the horizon, uh, April 17th through the 18th, we are hosting NOCTIs. Um, again, that will be uh, exams for 12th grade students only. Again, that's something that uh, we're looking forward to, and we will on that uh, soon. Another thing, April 29th, we'll be hosting Occupational Advisory Committee meetings. So again, that's a time where we invite industry partners in to uh, work with our teachers. Uh, those are small group committees that work specifically looking at programs, uh, curriculum, safety, supplies, equipment. Uh, we will be focusing this meeting on equipment, supplies, facilities, and safeties. 
uh, for safety measures. Um, again, I just like to acknowledge our CTE teachers, the amount of work that goes into that. Uh, there's a lot of additional work facilitating and orchestrating meetings and also communicating that out with industry partners. So looking forward to a busy month. Uh, more to come. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Bellman. All right, I'll wrap up building our reports. Um, as previously mentioned by Mrs. McLaughlin, we had some great concerts here in March. I urge you, if you've not seen a March concert, please do so. Uh, it truly is an opportunity to see the growth from when they start and uh, when they end. And I know uh, specifically the Sing in the Spring concert was literally a packed house. Um, so we couldn't ask for a better audience, a better community to support March in our schools more. Um, uh, May, May 4th will be our prom for this year. We are again collabor uh, working with Collaborating for Youth to run a prom, uh, prom pledge campaign, um, which is encouraging and challenging students to remain substance free during that evening and, and weekend. So have some events planned with them. A banner will be in our cafeteria for them to sign. Um, there'll be a poster contest that we're gonna run through advisory. Uh, and of course, we'll be hoping that we uh, have a great event on May 4th. And lastly, uh, this afternoon, uh, we hosted our final senior class meeting of the year, believe it or not. We shared important information with our seniors uh, to help close them out for the year. Uh, we talked about graduation week, we talked about prom, we talked about the senior party, um, a lot of great things going on uh, between now and then. Uh, we told them to gear up because it'll be a quick ride, but it'll be a fun one. Um, so um, voted on May court, we voted on prom court, we took care of a lot of business today in a short amount of time. Um, so. Again, graduation is fastly approaching. Uh, it'll be before we know it on May 23rd. We certainly wish all of you to attend. Help celebrate in the class of 2024. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Thurner, I understand you'll be doing the student reports. I will try to do our due justice. All right. <laughs> so I'm just going to read Audrey's report since she couldn't be here with us tonight. Um, she's reporting out from Student Council that they held their third annual March coin hunt in lieu of St. Patrick's Day on March 15th. Lots of students were able to find hidden coins and enter to win a McDonald's gift card. Her last report out is our their spring pep rally took place right after or right before the Easter break on March 27th. Student athletes were able to share about their season so far. Grades competed in small competitions and juniors won the spirit set, which is a pretty good thing. So that concludes her report. Okay, thank you. And then we'll move to assistant superintendent report. Okay, great. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, I just wanted to wrap. Up. <laughs> Do you like how I transition there? <laughs> okay. Um, what I wanted to just share is we um, finished our second meeting of our steering committee for a comprehensive plan in the month of uh, March, which was a great success. Um, we continue to look at our goals that we're looking forward to um, in our new comprehensive plan that will span over three years. This the main uh, topic that we looked at was our mission statement, our vision and also our belief statement. So we started digging into those to make sure that we were satisfied with those or if we wanted to tweak those. And also as Dr. Travalo shared, um, we are looking at our essential practices as well and continuing to look at our data to start driving our goal planning forward. So it is a process that takes time to, um, as we evolve, but I am very pleased with the progress that we're making so far. I also wanted to share that today ended our last meeting um, of the year of our District Professional Learning Committee. Um, this committee was formed several years ago to help develop the professional learning opportunities um, for both our professional staff and our support staff. This committee has done an exceptional job over the last year and a half since I've been here, um, and even before I got here, in developing and purposeful and meaningful professional learning opportunities for our professional um, staff. We are looking at um, getting ready to turn our draft into a final product of our 24-25 professional learning plan um, for the school district. We're just about ready to put a nice bow on it and give it to Dr. Perry to approve it. So it's kind of excited. <laughs> and the last report of this, um, this month is, as I shared with you earlier in the year, we on March 25th, we launched our first um, teacher choice professional learning opportunity for our teachers. We had over 30 sessions that they could choose from, and we had over 25 internal presenters and several presenters from outside. That was a choice and voice day where teachers could choose between three sessions. And also we provided, the, which is part of our comprehensive plan, the opportunity for wellness. Um, we had a wellness hour where we provided several opportunities for our teachers to engage. We had walk on the track, we had cookies and coffee, um, we had yoga, we had pickleball, all opportunities where teachers could take time over an hour and seek their wellness that they felt um, was appropriate. We also had fiscal wellness. Um, so it was a, a plethora of, in, of information for our um, teachers. I am happy to report that we did receive our data from our evaluation and it was a giant success. Yeah. And that means we'll be doing it again. Yeah. 
Yeah. In the future. Very that good. concludes my report. Thank you. Dr. Paris. Yes. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, I think just to piggyback on that, a mass acknowledgement goes out to our curriculum leaders, to our administrators, Dr. Sterner and Dr. Trabato, for that heavy lift. That is uh, a huge, huge undertaking to have a choice and a voice day. And that perspective was completely driven by last year's feedback. So that's what we heard from our faculty through our professional development offerings was that we wanted more choice and we wanted it to be directly in line with our comprehensive planning goals. So everything that we did as part of our PD, uh, our professional development, our professional learning has direct alignment. Um, and there are those strands that we can see throughout the year. And so the work of that district-wide professional learning team is to identify what those key areas and how to build on them from one year to the next. So we are at that stage of the year where we are beginning to plan for next year. Um, so as you know, on this evening's agenda, we do have the 24-25 uh, proposed final budget for um, recommendation, recommendation for board approval. Um, furthermore, I'd also like to acknowledge our board members who are sitting on our board policy subcommittee. So we have that inaugural subcommittee meeting tomorrow evening at six o'clock here um, in the boardroom. So that is a public meeting. So we encourage the public um, to attend. And we will be looking at policies 100 through 115 as part of our board policy subcommittee meeting. And finally, last but not least, um, the progress that I'd like to share relative to NOE and CTE building uh, renovation and additions project. NOE will be undergoing the visual learning exercise with teachers, with administration, and with students where we provide them a lot of options about learning spaces, about colors, and about fixtures. Um, what we want our school to look like and feel like is the step where we are right now. So we have identified all of our specific learning spaces that we need um, to teach our children. But now what we're looking for is how can we create you know, a cohesive experience between NOE and CTE um, as that was a key priority that came for our, our board relative to equity between our two elementary schools. Um, so we will be engaging in that visual learning exercise. And then also for CTE, um, we're at that official phase now where we're interacting with engineers. So we've been working through that process with them. One key area um, that I'd like to publicly thank Conewago Township is that they're accepting, or we'll be taking a look at our application, seeking a parking variance. We're looking for larger parking spots. Um, so we will be seeking that variance. And as part of that variance, if that's approved, um, hopefully in May, that we'll be able to move forward and continue with our design. So um, it, it does work when we all work together, you know, for these large goals. And I couldn't be more proud. So that concludes my report this evening. Thank you, Dr. Perry. We appreciate the support of the townships. <laughs> okay. Then uh, we will go to public comment on agenda related items. I do not have any. Uh, comments uh, from ahead. I will open up the floor if there's any members of the public that, that want to have a comment on agenda related items. Are there any comments online? Yeah. Okay. And we will move to honors and recognition. Mr. Flickinger. Congratulations to Madison Cody, who was selected to Oxford High School Rotary Student of the Month for March. Uh, congratulations to Sydney Winpigler Lacrosse, Anita Leatherman Softball, who were nominated for the Gettysburg uh, Times Athlete of the Week for April 1st, um, 2024. Also attached are the College Acceptance and Scholarship winners awarded. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Flickinger. Our next agenda item will be the Treasurer's report. Mr. Buckley, I'll turn that over to you. Yes, uh, in our treasurer report, we have a total of $35,750,810.70 in acceptance. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay, we'll take a roll call vote. Mr. Buckley? Yes. 
Mr. Meckley? Yes. Mrs. Souter? Yes. Ms. Crew? Yes. Mr. Clickinger? Yes. Mrs. Slope? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. Getz? Yes. And Mr. Kinshu? Yes. Thank you. Okay, then we'll move to recommendations for board action. First is finance, Mr. Butler. And for finance, I would recommend we vote on items one through six. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? Um, does, when was the last time the roof was replaced? And then it was like, you're talking about over the yeah, the number, six. number six. So generally, like on a scale of one to ten, does it need done, need done right now? It's at it's, 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 it's out of warranty. Ah, okay. Any other discussion? Okay. As a comment, Mr. President. Sure. Yeah, yeah, the thank you. Thank you. Comment. Uh, there's been some discussion since December as to whether or not it's appropriate for this school district to continue funding extracurricular activities. There are those who argue the cost of such expenditures is of limited scope while citing benefit to the student and the local citizen. Therefore, the minimal impact it levies upon the average family in our community is an acceptable one. Yet others contend the responsibility of such expenses should fall upon should not fall upon the unwilling taxpayer, especially upon the shoulders of those who are experiencing personal financial hardship. And with that, we vote eight to one or seven to two, or maybe even six to three in favor of such expenditures month after month. When referencing the PA code, the purpose of public education is described as such. Public education prepares students for adult life by tending to their intellectual, and developmental needs and challenging them to achieve at their highest level possible. In conjunction with families and other community institutions, public education prepares students to become self-directed, lifelong learners and responsible, involved citizens. The code goes on to state, together with parents, families and community institutions, public education provides opportunities for students to acquire knowledge and skills, develop integrity, process information, think critically, work independently, collaborate with others, and adapt to change. Continuing on, we would find one reference after another to the importance and objectives of academics as the purpose of our public education system. Interestingly, at no point do we see any specific reference to non-academic endeavors outlined as purposes of public education in Commonwealth. We need to read into that initial section to justify funding non-academic ventures because, again, it simply isn't written into clear verbiage. Ultimately, it's a question of strict interpretation versus loose interpretation. And as a member of a conservative board, I'd like to note conservative ideology is tightly bound to strict interpretation. As conservative members of the board, we share in the responsibility to offer the children in our community a relevant and quality academic education provided in a safe environment. We also bear the duty to not take from our community members a single dime, which is an absolutely vital to the operation of an exclusively academic system. Innate value cannot be found in the verbiage in the PA code to justify the providing of non-academic opportunities by the public education system. As our founding fathers noted, and we're well aware, the natural propensity of government is to grow, to become more intrusive and more tyrannical. This phenomenon is clearly visible at every level of government, from the federal government, which now operates and spends daily outside the limitations applied to it by the Constitution of the United States, down to, generally speaking, the school district level where students' freedoms can be curtailed, freedom of speech can be curtailed, authentic due process can be ignored, and community members are subjected to unnecessary levels of taxation. We pride ourselves, and rightfully so, as a board which does more with less, particularly as we compare ourselves to the majority of the school districts within the Commonwealth. That stated, we're faced tonight with the decision as to whether we support capitalism and the free market philosophy 
which collectively dictate the earner has a right to keep what is earned and knows best how to allocate those earnings. To support this budget is to tell our community members, especially those struggling to make ends meet, that we need their money more than they do. Furthermore, the argument has been made, the members of our community are strong supporters. Sorry, just lost my face. Furthermore, the argument has been made, the members of our community are strong supporters and want to see these extracurricular programs continue. Interestingly, I too want to see our students benefit from these activities. However, one can point to those who lend reminder the community wants these programs and suggest those individuals may do with their money as they wish, which includes financially funding these ventures. For those who want to support a group, they can support it. And for those who choose not to support for whatever reason, they should have that choice. No one is compelled through taxation to support what they choose not to support or can't afford to support. How can one justify taxpayer subsidized or taxpayer funded entertainment for our children, particularly for a student whose family is of financial means on the backs of the, that student's neighbors who are struggling to keep a roof over their family's head, the water running, the electricity on, and food on the table. If the members of our community are strong supporters of these programs, I have every, every confidence they will come out and lend the support needed to ensure the activities are successful and prosper. And if this is the case, the participants won't really need funding from the school district. With no disrespect intended towards anyone, we have consistently justified unnecessary spending on the basis of it's for the children, while taking from the wallets and purses of those who live paycheck to paycheck or worse to fund these expenditures. While there are those who may equate a tax increase to that of a few overpriced luxury beverages each month, there are others who view that same tax increase as taking from their children's dinner plate badly needed funds to account for an inflated cost of living for which their annual pay raises have not kept pace. Personally, I'm happy for those who as children never knew what it was like to go to bed hungry because a bag of boiled noodles divided between five family members was dinner or two boxes of hamburger helper and a single pound of ground meat was that which comprised not one, but two dinners for a family of five. But for some of us, we don't need an imagination to relate to these experiences. I'm also happy for those who in their adulthood never knew what it was like to decide which bills to pay or face with threats of foreclosure, not because of irresponsibility, but because life happened. And when funds are thin, it takes years to recover. For those who have lived or currently lived this life, the stress and helplessness is all too real. CNBC reports 70% of Americans are experiencing stress as it relates to their personal finances, and only 45% of Americans have an emergency fund. And out of that, a quarter of them have $5,000 in their savings or less. And Business Insider reports that the liquid assets of the lower 80% of American households have dropped below their levels in March 2020 at the onset of the COVID scare. And the concerning stats go on. We also have to consider the inevitable cost of adding millions of dollars to the payroll over the next several years as we add dozens of new positions to the district, needed positions, by the way. These aren't one-time expenses, but rather expenses which are or will be here to stay. So as we each prepare to cast our respective votes towards this proposed budget, we must do so cognizant of the fact we fund entertainment at the cost of academic opportunity and partially on the backs of citizens who need their money more than the district. We will each vote whether or not to fund an athletic department, when academic positions go unfunded. We will each vote as to whether we will continue to apply valuable funds to a football field and stadium lights, auditorium lighting, PIAA fees, and the maintenance of fields, or 
pivot those funds to meet the needs of the educators as classroom budgets remain stagnant in this budget versus the current year's budget. As a hardworking, taxpaying citizen of our community for the last two decades, I came from a childhood of low income and want, and my wife and I have struggled through much of our adulthood together. God has blessed us abundantly, and we're in a much better position than we've ever been before. But the memories of a growling stomach and head and hands trying to determine how best to keep a household financially afloat for another month have not escaped me. With that stated, I cannot in good conscience vote in favor of the proposed budget or non-essential purchases. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Not only that, but you know, the book says that we're supposed to take care of the orphan and the widow. So, any other discussion? I think that was incredibly well thought out and well said, Bill. I agree with that. I probably couldn't have said it so eloquently. eloquently. Um, I agree that, unfortunately, we're at a time where citizens need to recover as a family and as a whole. And it doesn't mean that we don't like sports, but at least I, I don't like sports. I like sports. Well, some sports. Um, but I, I would just like to investigate the cruxes, the nuts and bolts of the the budget past and potentially future before we go forward to make sure that there's nothing we can change to fundraise for um, without having to ask for even another penny from, from the citizens because the kids deserve to have a home and a roof. They deserve to not know what it feels like to go hungry or to be homeless. Because some of us know what that's like. Some of you may know what that's like. So for the people who don't have a problem with tax increases and love football and love philanthropy, like that's awesome. Um, help out, you know, but at $112 a year, some families can't afford that. And so for the ones who can, and with all of us putting our heads together, maybe doing some fundraising or, or something, let's just make sure where we have to go to the citizens and ask instead of demand for money and force them to hand it over. Thank you, Ms. Group. Any other discussions? Um, clarify what you said the other week about what the Supreme Court said in reference to taxes. <laughs> I didn't say so anything about the Supreme Court taxes. Uh, made a statement it would it would probably be 10 years down the road. Well, I think it's, it's not the Supreme Court, it's the Court of Pennsylvania. And I think you're referencing the um the making it more equitable across right. this the school yeah. districts. So there is uh for uh, for those that are unaware. Uh, fair funding was taken to the uh, courts last year uh, after lengthy uh, deliberation and trial. Uh, it was determined that the Pennsylvania education uh, is a constitutional right, and the uh, way that it is currently funded is uh, not in keeping with the Constitution. So there are currently, our legislation is working on how to address that. And my comment related to that is that um, experience-wise, it will take a while before uh, that gets resolved. So the case itself was in process for, I'm gonna say a decade-ish before it got <laughs> to the trial. Uh, so within that, um, we uh, have as part of the budgeting process, we are a district that is underfunded from the state perspective. Uh, and we would benefit from that, but I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know when that will occur. I will say that I am optimistic that from what I've seen, that uh, both parties do agree that um, facility improvement is a priority. So I'm optimistic we will see some funds uh, that uh, will come as a result of that, that's strictly dependent on what happens in the legislature. They don't make the funds available, the funds aren't available. 
Well, some of us understand that these property taxes and such are unconstitutional. Praise God. Hopefully, they'll change things. I do think the school, school board and its administration is doing the very best that they can with the lower amount of money that they have. But shameless plug, citizens talking to the legislatures in power and numbers, maybe we'll get it moved a little bit. And then maybe this discussion won't be necessary. You know, pool funding here, what are we gonna do? Because um, I do think our community, if any, can work, can work together and can, if it's gonna be anything that we're gonna be perfect, it's gonna be here. So. I know when I was campaigning, there was a gentleman that was already paying $14,000 a year in his taxes. And he didn't want his taxes to go up either. <laughs> so. Any other discussion? I will say um, just. Um, Mr. Getz had referenced that, that where we stand and it's part of uh, the budget process and funding for uh, for our students. Uh, we are in the uh, the bottom 25% in the uh, cost per student, meaning that uh, the cost of, of our education or educating our students is uh, in the 25% lowest cost across the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, it uh, dropped last year we were at uh, 325, now we're at 328. Uh, so um, the costs do continue to, to go up. Uh, we do uh, try to, I think we do, uh, make good use of the uh, taxes that are collected and, and how that's spent with uh, the district. As a new member, I've been all over the finances and they really do try um, that means anything to anybody they is us yeah, the, yeah mm -hmm. the administration the old like the old board you know has a new member like you want to go in and you want to hit the ground running and you want to be like okay where was the mess up? and like you know of course i'd like to ask a few more questions now and then but i've, I've actually been pretty impressed when everyone's been very open about the, the budget and Lori's explained all the intricate stuff and I'm, i i was almost sad to see how how hard they've tried because then I'm kind of afraid there is no solution. Um, but I'd like to give it, like me personally, I'd like to just hold off for a minute and just try a little bit more for fundraising or whatever before we have to raise things for our citizens. All right. Not seeing any other discussion. Let's take a roll call vote. Right. Mr. Buckley? Yes. Mr. Meckley? Yes. Mrs. Souter? Yes. Ms. Krug, are we doing the, the, the finance section? Finance. Okay, I'm gonna say yes to everything but four and five. Mr. Flickinger? Yes. Mrs. Swope? Uh, no to number three, number four, and number five. What about the other items? Yes, to number one, two. So Mrs. Miller? Thank you. Um, I'm going to say uh, yes to one, two, three, and six, and no to four and five. Mr. Getz? Yes, except numbers four and five. And Mr. Kinchu. Yes. Thank you. We will move next to Ways and Means, Mrs. Seller. Okay, I skipped my page. I would like to. Sorry about that, guys. I would like to propose that we accept for board approval ways and means items number one through six this evening, please. Do we have a second? Good. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Okay. 
Not seeing any discussion, then we will take that to roll call vote. Ms. Duncan. Mr. Meckley? Yes. Mrs. Souter? Yes. Ms. Crew? Yes. Mr. Flickinger? Yes. Mrs. Swope? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. Getz? Yes. Mr. Buckley? Yes. And Mr. Kinchin? Yes. Thank you. Next is personnel, Ms. Miller. Okay. I move to approve the following personnel items as listed, number one through eight, with additional personnel items, number nine <laughs> through 23. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing any, let's take a look all those. Mrs. Souter? Yes. Mrs. Crew? Yes. Mr. Flickinger? Yes. Mrs. Swope? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. Getz? Yes. Mr. Buckley? Yes. Mr. Meckley? Yes to all but 21, I must abstain. And Mr. Kinshaw? Yes. And next is property and supplies, Mr. Meckley. I'd like to recommend board approval for items one through five with additional item number six. Do I have a second? Um, can I make a motion to table number one for the moment? There's a pending motion right now, so we've got to finish that part. Yeah. So do I have a second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Now can I say yes? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, can I make a motion um, to table um, number one? either until the next board meeting or I think on the 6th, there's a study session. I know that's not typically voting, but I think can maybe put a voting thing on that. Not be able to on the 6th, which is not like subcommittee. That's, that's not have a form. So that would, uh, I'm sorry, that's the second. So you're saying on May 6th, which is the study session? Yes. Okay. Because I think there was some concern about it getting too close to the June request. Okay, so the motion is to withdraw item number one uh, till the next meeting. Yes. Okay. And I, I just want to confirm this is about the ATO soccer club. Yes. Okay. And then not specifically the club, but just that it's, that it's number one. outside. It's like okay, a private event, and the other events are directly related to this school. Okay. Just so, just want a little bit more time for discussion and review of rental rules and such. Is there a second? Any discussion on the motion? Let's take a roll call vote. This is on the motion to withdraw item number one. Mrs. Crew, Ms. Crew? Yes. Mr. Flickinger? No. Mrs. Swope? Yes. Mrs. Miller? Yes. Mr. Getz? No. Mr. Buckley? No. Mr. Meckley? No. Mrs. Souter? No. Mr. Kinshu? No. Motion remains on the table. So the original motion. The original motion remains on the table. Any additional discussion on the original motion? See, maybe let's take a roll call vote on the original. Mr. Flickinger? Yes. Mrs. Slope? No. Mrs. Miller? No to one and yes to two, three, four, and five mm -hmm. and six. Okay, can you say that again, please? <laughs> no to one and yes to two through six. I also please thank you for the question. Mr. Getz? Yes. Mr. Kinchu? Yes. Mr. Buckley? Yes. Mr. Meckley? Yes. Mrs. Souter? Yes. Ms. Crew? No to one, but yes through the rest. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Is there any other business which may properly come before the board? Mr. President, I, I'm just um, asking that my my words be 
add it to the next. If you could, what I'd ask is is send the um, the words to uh, secretaries and stuff. And yes, which is what I'll do. Yeah. I'll talk to them. So say, can, can we do that? Traditionally, um, the minutes are the minutes of the board. It's a summary of what happened. We don't attach documents that are not the board's documents. So there will be a summary of what he said. Um, it's not typically attached as part okay. of the form sentence. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you can give me the bullet point. Yeah. yeah. Could you give it like bullets? Okay. That would be helpful. Okay. Um, with that said, it was brought to my attention this weekend from uh, actually multiple citizens um, when trying to go back and review recorded things that they're not there. So I don't know if it's one, one said they were told, like, after two weeks, it gets pulled and they can't see it. I think I saw there was, it was like 30 days. It, it, so we leave the recordings up until the minutes are posted. Um, can we add discussion for that to the agenda next time? Um, I don't know if they're stored on the server or what, but there's a concert on the same YouTube channel that the minutes are on from like two or three years ago. Um, I think that some of the value of these discussions needs to be there for new citizens or to review. Um, so if we could add that to discuss the longevity of the recordings and then what happens to them, even if they do need to come down, how they can be saved, stored and accessed. So for clarity, YouTube is not, you do not the district does not control what's Posted on YouTube or stored on YouTube. That's not the districts. When you click the link, that's where it takes you to. There, there is uh, there is a YouTube site that has that. But that's not the districts. Like, yeah, so we live stream and then the videos are stored on YouTube. They are past, like you said, Mr. President. We it was agreed upon that when the board minutes were approved, that the those live stream videos would would go down. Um, the only thing that we need to worry about once they stay up more than 30 days is we need to retain them for, um, I believe it's three years so at a minimum before they can be deleted. Okay, so that's that we certainly can have that as an instead discussion in a future meeting. I didn't necessarily understand the three-year comment, but I guess we can address that. Then. That would come as part of that discussion. Like right, right to know, uh, we're, we're bound by it. Um, retention policy um, after uh, that the media it lives for over that time period then we're bound by the retention policy that so it's in like a server at the school yes so we years. have to so I would have to download the videos and retain them in case we would get a right to know request or something along those lines um, to have the videos brought back up okay so even though we haven't had the discussion yet has of right now Three, from today, three years ago, you have, or the school has all the videos at this point. No, the answer that, I think the answer is no, because they haven't. Yeah. So you have to a certain amount of time that you can remove them before you're subject to that policy for the retention period. So that's what I was agreed upon that we just want to retain retain those documents. It was more for us. You can't be in physical attendance that you could watch the videos and then you had the 30 days that you could go back and then they would be gone and then we would not be subject to the retention period. That's what does. Okay, so started. as of right now, the two or three videos that are on YouTube are all that's in existence on this earth. Yes. So, so the only videos that we take out are the board meeting videos. So nothing's ever been decided, like um, just started with the study session, the board study sessions, nothing has been talked about or decided as far as that. So at this time, that's staying up. So we'd be subject to the retention period. The board meetings were the only ones that we retained previously, or I mean, sorry, not retained, that we live streamed previously, and it was agreed upon that they would come down after 30 days. We would not be subject to any retention of those, those videos. Okay, um, when we have that on the agenda, which I'm hoping is next time, 
during the study session, since that's kind of your wheelhouse. Is he gonna, are you going to be able well, to come to that? We'll coordinate that, but certainly we need consideration since in Doug's position. Um, I'm wondering if it might better be served as part of a policy discussion, you know, with that or policy that governs uh, document our records, et cetera. Um, unless that's the wish of the entire board, that we would hold that policy. I can certainly bring it to study at any time the board would wish. What uh, what series is that retention? So that's probably operations. Yeah, so it's seven hundred. So what yeah, I'm hearing is we're going to bring it, bring it, it, bring it to yes. the board as the yes. as COVID. Um, certainly, what I will say is that you know it forced us to have that discussion sooner um, rather than later. You know, since that was 2020 when we began that practice and. Then that that question of retention. So I think it's a timing thing too. Um, do you happen to know that number right off the top of your head? I have it in my notebook that isn't right here. Uh, records management. So it would be a part of ops, and then. I think what I'd like to do is just leave that as an action and just bring it back, Dr. Perry. Dr. Perry? Yes. We'll take that as an action and then bring it to, to the board uh, in one of our study sessions. Okay. We may. Is that what you mean? Or part of the uh, board policy? It would not be part of the board policy okay. because it's in the 700. So we want right. to that. Whether that's May or agenda, I'll defer or June, I'll defer to you. It depends on the size of the Okay. Any other items? If it does, I'm sorry. If it does go to June, is there any way to like hold the videos for now until we've established it? So, like, more is it getting Maybe deleted? So if we can get it, we can get it in May, I would say it would be good for May. Okay. But, um, we, we want to be consistent with policies. Okay. All right. Any other business? Okay. Then I will open the floor public comment on non-agenda items. You know, yes, sir. Um, Brian Fox, Hamilton Township. I have three quick things. Uh, number one, I had the privilege of helping to chaperone an eighth grade field trip today to Gettysburg. Kids were fantastic. Uh, oh. So, supportive field trips like that, very, very worthwhile. I think this one had some grand things like that, but it was just a, a, absolutely a pleasure to, to see how the kids interacted. Polite, respectful, timing, generally. Well, they are pretty good this time. Uh, <laughs> number two, there was talk. Uh, I came up a, maybe a board meeting or two ago. The eighth grade basketball game against the faculty, where the eighth grade faculty pulled out last minute. Uh, one thing that I learned since then, I believe, on your faculty is the Lone Catholic High School's all-time leading basketball scorer. <laughs> so next year, I think the kids ought to get six players at once. Uh, and then finally, uh, I mentioned before, uh, zoning hearing for special exception, warehouse at cross keys. It was continued from a week and a half ago. So for those that are interested, a date is to be determined. It's a Trojan horse for all of us. Uh, but I'd encourage you to keep your eyes on that case you're interested in attending. It'll probably be again at the uh, Washington Thank you. Thank you. Not seeing any other in the room. How about online, Dr. Perry? Yes, I do um, have one public comment from Valerie Elliott. Um, Valerie is a New Oxford resident, and the item that she has a series of six questions for that I'll read publicly are regarding the district comprehensive planning steering committee. Number one, how are members of the district comprehensive planning steering committee selected? 
i.e. the process for selection. Um, number two, what is the criteria standard for selection and retention of members in this committee? Number three, why do there appear to be more members of the community than parents, teachers, or students on this committee? Number four, what is the objective of this committee? Number five, what are the assigned tests of this committee? And number six, how and when will the progress of this committee be reported to the public? That I, we can, if, they, if they're comfortable answering any of those questions, we can do that here or we can take the action to uh, reply back. Okay, Dr. Stein. I'll try to do my best in summarizing okay. the, the six um, points there. This, the comprehensive plan is a plan that spans over a um, expectancy of three years, and that really drives the school district into what our goals are. Um, it allows us to develop our professional learning plan. It allows us to provide communication. It allows us to provide opportunities for our students and our teachers. It drives the decisions that we make. Um, if you do hang around us, you know, in the district, you will see that this is something that we talk about all the time. It's not just at the state reunion in the beginning of the year by Dr. Perry. It is literally spoken about in every decision that we make. It's a driving force for us. Um, we take it very seriously and it's an excellent process. Part of the process is the state requires us to develop what we call a steering committee. The steering committee must be um, created by stakeholders. The stakeholders are administrators, teachers, staff members, community members, parents, and students. And the reason why those stakeholders are required is because it gives a great opportunity for all those different stakeholder groups to voice their opinion within the school district or how their sense of the school district is. Um, creating that steering committee, um, I, looking at our steering committee, I think it's very well balanced. And let me explain that to you. So all of our building administrators are there, our cabinet members are there representing our, um, our administrators, our teachers, every single school building is represented by at least two teachers. Um, that process, I work with the building administrators for that. Um, also our union, our um, Conewago Valley Educational Association is represented there as well. When we get to parents, there's at least two parents for every school building that was selected. I worked with the building principals in that as well. Um, our teachers, at least two teachers from every building are represented um, on the committee. The question that came up about community members that I think I can explain pretty well is that is a huge stakeholder group. Now, the way we look at community members within um, CBSD is we have community members and we also have industry partners. They fall within that category. There is no delineation between them within the comprehensive plan portal where we have to report to the state. Because we are such an industry-driven community, it is very important to us to get industry feedback within the comprehensive plan as a lot of our students graduate into industry. So our community, it looks like we're having community members, but if you divide the community members in half, half of those are community members and half of those are industry partners. So that might be why it looks a little bit unbalanced as far as that. Um, again, our students are represented within our high school, our middle school, and then we stop at our intermediate school just because of their age. All of those students are selected because they are current leaders within that school, whether it's through student council or student leadership. So the, usually the president or vice president are the ones that are selected for that. Um, so that's how our steering committee is developed. The state mandates that after the comprehensive plan is developed within draft, we just went through that with our special education plan, that it must go on public, um, on public so that they can view it for 30 days. Once that is viewed, we take any feedback from the public that we get, um, it will be posted on our website, so it'll be easy access um, for them to fill out a survey to provide feedback. Then once that happens, we bring it back, I will bring it back to the board for you to vote on the comprehensive plan that will then be sent to the state and uploaded into the state portal. Um, I think I summarized. Um, assigned tasks. Uh, the question was, what are the assigned tasks of the committee? The committee is made up, as you know, a plethora of people, but we also understand that People have lives, you know, outside of uh, outside of the workday, and they may not be able to be there at every time, um, at every meeting that we have. We have nine meetings, so that means that this committee is going to work over eighteen hours collectively, um, plus as far as developing a draft of the comprehensive plan. As far as our task, it really depends on where we are in the comprehensive plan and the meetings that we have. Um, our task this last time 
was for them to review the mission statement, the vision, and our belief statement so that when they came to the committee, that they were ready to discuss those. And that's exactly what we did. Prior to that, they looked through the essential practices um, that the state has for us. So that they had a good understanding so that when we could, we could talk about it. So my goal is leading the comprehensive plan is to front load the work that we're doing prior to the meeting so that when we're there for two hours, we're not spinning our wheels or trying to catch up that we can hit the ground running. So each time there is a task, but again, for me to list all those tasks, it really depends on how much we get through within a meeting. Um, just like any good lesson plan, you can plan what you wanna get through, but depending on the, the conversation and the breakout rooms that we have is depending on how much we get through. So those tasks do change from time to time. And will the progress of this committee be reported to the public? So our last meeting is going to be in January. Um, again, we have nine meetings throughout. Again, it'll be reported out each of my reports each month. As you know, I've been reporting out on the progress of the committee. Um, once this goes on public view, view for 30 days, the goals will be there. Our benchmarking will be there. And all of the collaborative work um, that we work together on the steering committee will be there. Um, so the progress is open. Um, I will continue to give updates to the board every month. Um, we will take a hiatus over the summer for our steering committee. You're welcome, Mommy. Um, because we just because it is very hard to pull people together over the summer months, but we will um, May will finish uh, for this this time, and then we will pick back up in September. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And is there any other online comments? Yes. Okay. Then for dates to remember, we do have tomorrow the policy subcommittee that is at uh, six p.m. On Thursday, May 2nd, we have the Athletic Subcommittee that will be at 6 p.m. On Monday, May 6th, is the study session at 7 p.m. And Monday, May 13th, is the um, we have at 7 p.m. adopt the final budget. And then at 7.30, the board meeting. Do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? See a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Aye